31, we're going to finish up this section by trying to find the domain and range of the function f, whose graph is shown. So you see I have a piecewise function. There are three pieces here. So let's try and figure out domain and range. I'm going to take note of the arrows. I always like to start with arrows. So I see I've got right forever and up forever. And I've got left and up. So I, I do take note that I don't have a down forever. I, I go left to right. I can see both of my negative infinity and infinity are going to show up on the domain. Um, and I, I just have to check wherever these pieces break, you want to look for, for the domain issues. So if we look here, I have, I'm going from negative infinity and I have an open dot here around x equaling negative 2, which which might be a problem, except I, I get my bases covered, or I get my domain covered in a sense, by the fact that this piece has a closed dot here. So I do have a function value at x equaling negative two. If I were to plug negative two into this function, I would get positive two back out because that is an ordered pair and it's got a closed dot right there. So I'm going negative infinity, might have a problem at negative two, but I'm saved. Okay, so I move along, everything's good, everything's good. I get another open dot. So again, my spidey senses are going off a little bit, but I have my bases covered because I have this closed dot down here, and then I go all the way over to positive infinity. So my pencil, as it moves left to right, doesn't have anything that it needs to leave out. My domain in this case is going to be all real numbers, which is different than example five. If you remember in example five, we had two open dots, at x equaling negative 1, and that was why I needed to remove negative 1 from my domain back in example 5. All right, so for my range, I see I have an up forever, and I don't have a down forever, so I, I need to take a look at my lowest point. And these tie for my lowest point, but this one, since it's closed, is actually my lowest point. Because over here, it's open at, it looks like it's about 2, 1, 2, about 2, negative 2. It's open here, excuse me, negative 2, negative 2 open here, so I don't actually hit the y value of negative two on this leftmost piece, but I do hit it right here. I can see my lowest point. This would be one, two, one, two. So this is the lowest point at two, negative two. And since I'm talking about range, I only care about the y value. So I'm gonna go from negative two to infinity, right? Because I start at negative two lowest up to positive infinity highest, and I want to include negative two in my range because that, that point is a closed dot. So there's my domain and range, all real numbers and then negative two to infinity. Okay, so with that, we're at the end of section 3.2. Let's just take a look at our learning outcomes and hopefully we feel comfortable with these. So we should be a little bit more comfortable finding the domain and range of a function, whether I give you a graph a graph that's an ordered pair, a graph that's a continuous function, or I give you some, some tables or anything along that line. Um, and then we should be able to graph piecewise functions. And that's again, when we take pieces of functions for however many functions you wanna grab pieces of, and then we just plop them down onto one graph. And we can have two pieces, three pieces, seven pieces, however many you want. And with piecewise functions, we do just need to be a little careful on domains and ranges, especially at those breaking points. All right, so with that, we're going to close out section two, excuse me, section 3.2. And then I will catch you guys at the next section where we're talking about rates of change. I'll see you in a few. Bye.